All right, so today what we're gonna build is something that's essentially gonna automate my finances. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but since I've started this YouTube channel and since I'm doing some freelance stuff, I have to have a company of my own that I run and that means that I have to keep track of like business expenses or the like invoices and that sort of stuff that I get. Basically a couple weeks ago I found out that uh, I looked at my bank account or the website for my bank account and I noticed that there was like a little thing down at the bottom that says download a CSV file and then that kind of sparked an idea in my head. Basically this CSV file will contain all the different transactions that have been done on my company account. Because basically at the end of the, each month, I will have to sit down and write down all the different uh, transactions that have been made and then figure out how much did I make that month, how much uh, were my business expenses and how much salary has, have I taken out, how much tax should I pay on that salary. And that is kind of a, a little bit of a tedious process to do that. So when I noticed that download a CSV thing, that kind of made me feel like, oh, that's a really good idea for a video. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna take that, which is gonna be a CSV file that's gonna contain all the different transactions. And that will then give me at the end of each month, a bank statement that's gonna say, that's gonna essentially summarize how much I made, how much were my business expenses and how much salary have I taken out? How much should I pay in taxes for that salary? Uh, so that's going to be super, super exciting and that's kind of what this video is going to be. We're essentially automating my finances. So let's get started. Okay, so I just quickly want to mention that today's video is sponsored by Kite. So what Kite is, is a auto completion engine for Python. It's a plugin that integrates with tons of different text editors like Atom, Visual Studio Code, Sublime, Vim, and PyCharm. And what they do is they use machine learning to provide the completions. And that means that it's the smartest auto completion system out there for Python. And I used it for this video and I'm really impressed because it's really smooth the integration is really smooth and i find myself using it a lot and compared to a couple other auto completion systems that i've used in the past where the suggestions end up feeling a little bit choppy and sometimes it's more of a struggle to find the right suggestion than to just type it out yourself uh, i thought that kite was just going to be more of the same and maybe a slight improvement but it's miles ahead of anything else that i've tried and it's really improved my productivity because it does provide the right suggestions at the right time. And it also has a lot of other features that are really good that I figured we should go through as well. Feature number one, ranked completions. And I sort of mentioned this before, but Kite's completions are sorted by relevance instead of popularity or alphabet or anything else. And they use machine learning to determine what would be the most relevant suggestion at this time. And that's how they're able to come up with better suggestions than any other system that I've used. Feature number two, line of code completions. And that means that it's able to actually complete full lines of code for you. Feature number three, intelligent snippets. Using their machine learning, they're able to actually suggest placeholder values for when you're calling different functions. And lastly, feature number four, which is called Copilot. And Copilot allows you to no longer have to Google Python documentation because Copilot allows you to see the documentation right within your text editor or IDE. So if you're working in Python or really just doing anything with Python, then definitely download Kite and give it a try. And then once you've done that, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and letting me know what you think of it. I know this is gonna be super useful for you guys. And I can't stress enough how much of like a different level this auto completion engine is compared to other ones. So just try it out, download it, link in the description. All right, so this is what I got from my bank uh, website or my, my bank account, I guess. Um, now I've kind of edited this so that it uh, doesn't actually show what I've tra uh, my transactions, but uh, the way that it's structured is exactly the same way that it was structured when I downloaded it from the website. So first we get the date, then we get the transaction. 
we have the amount that we insert or the amount of the transaction and then the current balance in the account. Okay, so uh, right now this is uh, what I came up with for requirements. I decided to just write down some requirements because I wasn't quite sure exactly what we're going to do <laughs> or how we're going to do it. So that's so that's kind of the idea. Um, I, I'm not sure how well this does actually explain it, but uh, every month we'll get this and then we'll be able to calculate based on this and all the previous months what I could actually get out as my potential salary. And based on how many salary withdrawals, it'll calculate what the tax uh, percentage would be and what the tax amount would be. And then it will save that here so that we can then easily tell how much tax we should have paid for uh, October. So then at the end of the month, we can just pay that amount and we know that we're good. I feel like this is going to be super difficult to kind of explain until we get started with it. So this is just kind of an overview of what we're going to do. And now we're going to actually get into this and get it started. So the first thing that we do is we're going to create a new project. Okay, so now we have our file. Now what we need to do is we just need to essentially load the CSV file. So we need to load this file so that we can then access all of the different columns, I guess, in, in, these, in the CSV file. So we're gonna Google that and we're gonna try to figure out how to do that. All right, so now we're able to print all this stuff out. So as you can see here, this is uh, the date, the name of the transaction, the transaction, and then the ending balance. All right, so what a transaction has is a name, amount, date, and account number. Right, so now I think we have this as well, which is good. Um, now we need to save this uh, to a JSON file. All right, so the first thing is gonna be the date. How do we get the date to be uh, a Python date? Okay, so now we can get the date. The next thing that we wanna get is this so the name of it so we want to get this string and then we want to basically find where the first number is in the string yeah okay i think i know how to solve that all right so as always with python they have a super simple solution to these problems First, we print the entire thing here, so you can see withdrawal and then the account number. But then what I do is I basically split this string uh, with the space. So that means that we get one item here and then one item here, and that will then be the last item in the list. So that means that we can then extract that by doing uh, account num and then length minus one. So there we go, we have the account number. And then what I wanted to do is I wanted to get the name here uh, as well. And Python has a really simple method or library here that you can import called RE. I think you need that to be able to do this. And what I do then is I just say name equals and then this row, which is all of this. And then I just do replace account number with nothing. So I replaced the account number here with just nothing. Uh, so that was a really neat way to remove that from the string. So now we have just the name of the transaction, which is what you get printed down here. Uh, now let's take a look at what the last thing is gonna be that we need. Okay, so we need the amount and then that's it. Okay.
So now we're able to actually save the stuff to a JSON file, uh, which is really good. And the way that I did that is I first load the JSON file if there is a JSON file. So uh, we load that and then we basically get all the transactions and we create a list of all the transaction objects here. And then uh, what we do is we read the export or the, the bank statement that we want to read and then we create new transactions and then we check for each transaction we check whether we've already saved this transaction and if it doesn't exist then we add it to the list and then we save this entire list so if we run this then we get a json file with all of our transfers the next thing that we want to do is create the statement part which is going to be the bulk of uh, what we want this to be so we want to create something that does this so that's essentially going to be the next thing that we do create the methods and all that stuff to calculate the uh, statement for the month all right so that's what we're going to do now All right, so this is the base implementation right now. What I get is how much I withdrew, what amount of tax I should be paying this month, uh, salary, so how much I took out as a salary, and then the total income, so all of the money that I actually got into the company, and then the ending balance for the month in total, so that is the total amount of money that I had when, uh, when this month was done essentially uh, and then also uh, the ending balance for the month which is the amount of money that I got minus the money that I withdrew uh, and that is that ending balance so that is what we have and then we have also business expenses and the date so this is essentially our bank statement for October so now the next thing that we want to do is we want to save this to a JSON file. All right, so now we are able to save this to a JSON file. So we get this JSON file here with the statements. When you're working on these sort of things, where you're coding things out, I can really recommend uh, typing it out or like writing it out by hand. I usually write it out by hand. But even just typing it out like this will help you a lot, I think, because it kind of helps you think through the problem without coding it. So you're kind of just wording the problem that you have and that then makes it a lot easier to actually code it. Usually that saves you a lot of time because then you've been able to phrase it in the way that it would work. And then it's pretty simple to just break that down even further into what that would actually look like in a method or something like that. Uh, so I can really recommend just typing it out as soon as you run into some sort of problem. So I'm just going to run it to kind of show you what this will do. All right, so this is what we get now in the statements. We get a statement for each month so we get a statement for september and a statement for october which is right now so this is what i wanted it to do i think we can make this even more uh, advanced in the future maybe uh, but this is exactly what i wanted it to do and this is what i needed for it so that i can just simply run the script get the statement for the month i can see how much i've with withdrawn uh, I can also see the income, so how much I made that month. Uh, I can see the business expenses. All right, so I'm pretty excited about using this. I'm not sure how much of this, uh, how understandable any of this was, because it's kind of hard to explain certain things. But I think uh, this is something, if it's not something that you can use straight away, it's probably something that you could uh, do something similar in your bank. You can probably download a CSV file of your transfers. I'm guessing that's something that's pretty standard across most banks. So this script was just kind of a fun way for me to automate this process so that I don't have to sit and look through each statement and then calculate everything by hand. Uh, now I can just run the script and then I will get all the numbers that I want uh, or all the numbers of interest. 
uh, and then I don't have to think about it. So uh, yeah, that's, that's this one done. So that's what my script ended up looking like. I'm really happy about it because that means that I won't have to sit and go through each different transfer or transaction and look through what is a business expense and what is a salary and what should I pay in taxes, calculate all that stuff. Uh, this script just takes care of that for me. I hope this was kind of exciting to watch. I, I was really happy with this idea essentially when I came up with it. So I hope you enjoyed it as well. And again, before we get going, I just want to mention Clean Code Friday, which is an email that I send out once every week, so every Friday. And that's a super short email that contains a few of the like most interesting things that I've found or explored throughout that week. And this would be things like podcasts, uh, articles I've read, books I'm reading, coding tips and tricks, productivity tips, and really just anything I think you might enjoy. Uh, so if you want to sign up to that, there's a link in the description, or you can just go to caltech.com slash clean code, and you can sign up for it there. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I'll see you in the next one.